how did you crack DSA round uh, at Razor Pay? Um, basically, they have a machine coding round. They don't ex exactly ask the DSA questions. Uh, they are uh, they they will give you a real life problem. So, problem that actually developers actually face. So they focus mainly on low level design and oops, uh, objected oriented programming. So uh, they will give you a problem like design a very small library for this and this problem. So you have to design and code that. And it's not exactly like DSA, but uh, you know, problem solving really helps there. So you have to be, you know, comfortable in knowing co concepts of objected oriented programming. You also have to be comfortable with low level design and uh, i don't know if you already know what low level design is but uh, it is just similar to problem solving so you know uh, distribute the problem into multiple smaller parts and then code for those right it's not exactly like uh, a problem statement from dsa and then you take the input and you give the output but uh, you can google what low what are different types of low level uh, programming problems so this is what they ask and i'm i practiced for that but i am also i think uh, if if you focus you know in good uh, programming uh, practices you will eventually be comfortable with that so i was comfortable with the problem that they asked me and they are they were also uh, interested in the experience that i had so that's why I was hired. So it's important to have good experience. You know, you if you have worked on in any startup and you know you have delivered good uh, amount of contribution, that becomes the highlight of your resume. And most of the questions in, in the inter interviewer would ask will be around your experience. So you can do that, and then you can you know practice DSA. Yeah, uh, and for your interviews, you should practice DSA as well. Okay, I guess uh, this is it. Then uh, this is my introduction. Any questions? If there is no question, then we can start with the today's lecture. Okay, I'm just going to turn off the camera now. Just wanted to, you know, give have just wanted for you to have an image uh, who is teaching us and yeah, like that coding or DSA which one is the most important for placement for freshers I would say uh, for you both are equally important I would still say that you know work on projects and if you work on projects which is more uh, related to you know uh, the frameworks you know the libraries you know the tech stack you know so build a complete end-to-end -end project and i think that will be the best thing you can discuss in uh, in your interviews which platform did you pre-course coursera okay cool uh, just going to turn on the video now. How many projects should I have? I would say if I am inter I am the interviewer, I would be focused on the depth of the project rather than the you know number of projects. So if you have a project and if you have implemented multiple things in that project and how well you have uh, worked on on a, on a single project. I would say that will make more impact to, uh, for an interviewer, not the number of projects. Okay, you know, try to create a project with as much detail as possible. You know, complete end-to-end uh, -end project. Right. I hope that answers your question. Cool. Uh, any other questions? Okay, uh, 
so i guess there are no other questions and we are 20 minutes into the lecture already so let's start with the uh, uh first hold on let's start with the first lecture then okay mm. okay let me share my screen Let me start sharing my screen. All of you can see my screen. Okay. So I'll I'll tell you right now. Uh, I have this uh, repository on GitHub where I will be pushing the code. Right. So I will be pushing the code here, but since I have been taking, you know, last six, seven or eight batches, you will find other batches code as well. What I want you to do is I want you to follow this branch. So right now this is a sim, uh, this is an empty branch. All it has is the uh, timeline of the lectures. So uh, this is the branch you should follow. I'm just pasting the link for everyone here um okay whatever code we do during the lecture i will post that code in this branch okay so please follow just this branch uh you can see other branches code as well but it will be better if we code uh together and if you you know just uh worry about whatever we have learned during the lecture okay so i'm going to start with first folder which is the uh, intro okay and in this uh, i'm going to create a readme file and i will here i will just say that this is an intro to node.js and i will tell you what we are going to study in this lecture today okay first we will start with uh introduction basic introduction what node.js is things like that okay what is node.js when why are we learning node.js what is node.js used for things like that then second uh second thing that we are going to discuss is going to be about um what are global available in node.js so this question is just like, what is available to uh, us in Node.js? What is the possible things? Okay. Uh, then third, we are going to talk about modules. And modules in modules, we are going to talk about uh, core modules, user defined modules, and uh third party modules okay this is going to be about npm so this is what we have uh for today's lecture any doubt here also i'll pause for uh doubts uh, after i complete you know one segment of the uh, of the lecture i'll pause for a minute you guys can ask questions there so uh I mean, think of a, if you have any questions, wait for the segment or just and just put the question in the chat. I will look, uh, I will check the question and I will answer as, as we go. Okay. Okay. We are on the same page, right? Till now, everything's fine. Okay. So what is Node.js? Node.js is uh is it, it is a runtime for javascript right what does this mean this means that uh node.js is a program which will uh evaluate javascript code for us But why do we need Node.js? We already have browsers which can do these things for us, right? 
uh, in the browser i have uh, con i have this browser so uh, this browser can execute javascript code for me right so why do we need node.js okay this is the question we need node.js so that uh, we don't have to depend on browser and uh, basically here during uh, in this series we are going to learn backend development right so backend development is uh, not not to render or at the server side that's not correct uh, for backend development we need some program which is running constantly right what is backend backend is some program which is running constantly which means uh, 24 7 which is running 24 7 and all the requests will go to that program we make api request right from front end we make api request to the backend so request goes to the backend uh, this backend program and it gives a response so this program should be running on a server right on a server and server is nothing but a computer itself so server is also a computer so there is some program running which is constantly running and it is listening for request from front end and all the requests from different uh, front ends right so hold on i'll just explain with the diagram uh, let me just clear this so we have multiple clients that means uh, we have client one client one means our react application on some some users machine right so we have different different clients we have client two we have client three we have client four all of these are making api calls okay and there is also a server somewhere it is a, it is a single machine so all of these are sending requests to uh, this server so request you already know you have already implemented uh, making api calls from react right from react app to some json server you have already made the request correct are you able to follow me so this is the server that we want to uh, build now it has to be it has to run a program so uh, constantly running program that uh, listens for requests and gives out response so we want to build this server so uh, this server can be built in multiple languages it's not like you have to use uh, javascript you can use python you can use node.js uh, you can use java you can use c++ uh, c sharp there are a lot lot many languages that you can use to create server but since we already know uh, since we already know javascript why don't we just you know use that knowledge to build the server okay so that we don't have to learn another language itself okay that's why we are learning javascript and this is this was the problem faced by uh, programmers who knew javascript but wanted to do backend development so they, they did not want to learn a separate language just to build a server right just to build their own server now, one of these programmers who was named Ryan Dahl, okay, you can Google this. He is the creator of Node.js. So he created Node.js. He said, I know, I already know JavaScript. I don't want to learn any other language just to build my own server. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a program that will, you know, that will allow me to write my server in JavaScript. Are you able to follow me till this point? Um, we are going into history, right? Now we are going, we are discussing history. Why Node.js was required in the first place. It's not like we always need Node.js for server, but why did this requirement came into place in the first, you know, 
initially in the first phase so this is what we want and uh, programmers who already knew javascript they were reluctant uh, to learn any new language so they said we will create an environment which executes javascript on the server side we just don't want to use node.js only on the front end side sorry we don't want to use javascript only on the front end side we also want to use javascript on the back end side as well okay so he created uh, now how did he create node.js it's not like he uh, he wrote a complete uh, browser right he did not create a browser so what he said he what he did there is an open source there was an open source uh, runtime which is called uh, v8 engine right v8 javascript engine which is used uh, we which is used in uh, google chrome so google chrome has already built a javascript runtime engine okay and they used that in google chrome and they open sourced it so what uh, Ryan Dahl did, he uh, used this and he tweaked it a little bit. He tweaked it a little bit so that it can be used outside of browser. Okay. Now, what what is the advantage of running this outside of browser? It means I will write my whole uh, code base in JavaScript and that will be running as a server. That's it. So this is what Node.js, what Node.js is required for. We don't want to execute code only on the browser because browser is, you know, uh, used for front end. It is not used for back end. So on back end, there is only some single machine which is running a process, right? And uh, this is where our server is uh, responding to all the requests from different, different browser request right okay that makes sense any questions okay now uh, it for the for in simple language it is just a program that executes javascript right that executes javascript code for us now you already know about uh, this console, right? So in console, if, if I say console dot log some, you know, let's start with hello world. So what is this? I am writing some JavaScript code. Browser is understanding, right? Evaluating or executing this JavaScript code. First of all, it is reading this code. Then it is evaluating then it is printing the output okay three steps which is read evaluate and print this is what console is doing for us right okay so this is called read evaluate print loop that means we can do this in a loop we do this then again we can do something uh, similar so we can execute any command and console will execute that and then it will ask for another input another javascript uh, statement that we can execute okay this is called repl environment now uh, this is environment in browser but what i'm going to show you now is node.js when you install node.js it also comes with its own REPL environment, right? There is REPL environment. So it will execute JavaScript files as well. And if you want to, you know, give uh, commands uh, in, a, in a repeated manner, we can also do that. So what I'm going to do is, since you also have uh, Node.js installed on your machine, uh, you will be able to do this step as well. You just type node and this will say welcome to node.js version 16.15.1. I have this version and it says type help. So if I type help, 
it will give me uh, this uh, command. Sorry, this this uh, output, which is just like uh, helper text. Okay, so we can uh, run JavaScript code here. Just like in browser, we can run uh, JavaScript code in the terminal itself. With Node.js, it is uh, RDPL environment, right? So hello world. So we are getting hello world, okay? This is the output and this is what it returned. Console log returned undefined. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to exit from this. And this is one thing. And another thing is if we, let's say, make a JavaScript file and execute this. Okay. So right now this is a JavaScript file in this folder. I can execute this file directly from terminal with Node.js. I can just say node 01 intro index.js. Now what I'm typing here is this is the name of the program and this is the address of the file that I want to execute. And it should have valid JavaScript code. Right? This is a valid JavaScript code. Now what is going to happen? It will uh, start the Node.js program and Node.js will Node.js program will start going through this whole file. So index.js is the file. It will look at the first line, which is an empty line. So it will do nothing. Then it will look at second line and it will interpret this line execute and then execute this line. Okay. And then it will log hello world to the standard output, which is the terminal itself. Okay. So, and after that, there is no line. So that means it has finished executing the whole uh, file and uh, it will exit the process. Okay. It will exit that program. Does this make sense? Any questions so far? Okay. This is very simple, right? So what we have is we have Node.js. Node.js is a program which uh executes javascript code you can uh, run node.js repl environment like this or you can execute a file by giving it the address of the file which has valid javascript code now let's say you don't there is a file in which we you don't have valid javascript code right let's say this file or let's say i give the uh i give readme file okay if I give it readme file, then it's going to say uh, that this is not, uh, it's going to run into an issue because it, it is not able to understand this line as a valid JavaScript code, right? So it is saying uh, invalid or unexpected token. So this is one error. If your JavaScript, if your file has uh, invalid syntax, then it is going to throw an error like this. Okay. So that means, uh, uh, your file should have valid JavaScript syntax. Otherwise, it will throw an error. And this type of error is called syntax error. There are other types of errors as well, which are logical errors and uh, evaluation uh, problems. Okay. That means sometimes you have valid JavaScript syntax, like uh, this is a valid JavaScript syntax. If I execute this, this is a reference error. This is not syntax error. This is reference error. Now, although this, this is a correct syntax, but this variable is not defined. So uh, in this case, if we define the name, you know, uh, like this, if we define a name like this, then this problem will be solved. So it is a valid, JavaScript syntax, but it can have other uh, issues, logical issues like reference error. Okay. Also, one last thing that I want to show you is it doesn't really matter what is the syntax, what is the extension of your file. What matters is your uh, file, whatever your file is, it should have valid JavaScript syntax. Okay. Even if we do this, then we are going to get the same output. 
so it's not necessary to have the same ex uh, this extension it can have uh, any extension it can have jsx uh, sorry dot jsx okay it can have any extension all it really cares about is the content of the file which is the what are the statements okay or instructions in the file so it will execute that file right clear cool i would like to you know have uh, as many uh, students uh, responding so if there are enough responses in the chat that will be better uh, it's up to you but it's better if you you know uh, keep responding in the chat so that i know who is paying attention who is not paying attention okay yeah cool so this is uh, this is all about the first segment any questions about the first segment what is node.js what it does and how to use this now a little bit on the advanced uh, side if this part is clear now what we can do is with uh, this uh, this parameter that is the uh, that is the path of the file since i am in this folder which is ptweb folder so this is the root folder i am giving the whole address right i am giving this folder name and this file name if i let's say move to uh, this folder now i just have to use index so since i am already in this folder uh, i just need to pass the name of the file i don't need to uh, add the folder name okay so uh, if i run index uh, file and this is this is the file name after this i can also enter you know uh, other options as well so like this is the this is one option and this is one option i can enter as many options as possible when i am starting or executing a file i can give it as many options so you may have seen different different commands right where you give multiple options so you can give all these options as well and these options are nothing but uh, these are called arguments okay these are called arguments to so your arguments for the process okay so how do we uh, get how do how can we access these arguments in the code by saying process dot uh, arg v okay so when i do this this is uh, hello world this line is coming from line number 4 this output is coming from line number 6 and this is the output of line number 10 okay so I'm just going to write arguments here. So arguments, this is an array. So if I, let's say, pass only one argument, then we have three, uh, the, the size of the argument array is three. If I pass, let's say, five, uh, these three arguments, so in total, uh, five, uh, five words one two three four five these are five so five is the size of the array now the first is always going to be this location so it is showing where exactly is the node executable located okay so this is showing where is the node executable located on my machine the node executable is in user local bin no uh, bin directory okay second uh, second option second element we see here is the path of the file that we are currently executing so we are executing index.js file 
index.js file is located at this location on my PC. Okay. Now the third, uh, third argument is coming at the third position. And this fourth argument is coming at the fourth position. Okay. And the fifth argument is this one. All of these are string values only. So even if this is a, like a numerical, this seems like a numerical value here, we are only going to get a string value. Okay. Uh, where might we want to use this? Uh, we will discuss this where may this be helpful for us in future. Okay. But these are called arguments and you can uh, pass some, uh, some, any number of arguments. So let's say if, you know, I want to have an argument of name. So arg v and at the position number two, I want position number two. Okay. So I can just say a very simple program to write the, to just, you know, say hello. So hello to the whoever uh, is executing this program. So hello, Umakant Vashisht, like this. Okay. You can also have uh, asked them uh, something. So let's say uh, why we have to write process. Okay. Then we can have something like uh, designation. Okay. So sorry, this needs to be this. We can have another argument and we can say designation and size three. So I can say software developer, right? So like this. So even if I don't pass the fourth uh, argument, which is at position number three, so I will get undefined. Right, you can add a condition like this. Uh, designation is not provided. So you can do like do it like this. Okay. Uh, uh otherwise. this okay um if not designation okay so this is like a very small cli program yes but uh, basically node.js allows us to give the allow gives this option to us as well okay the whole purpose of showing you all uh, showing you this is that it it is provided to us by Node.js. Okay. Now, uh, one question is, why do we have to write process? And that's a very good question. Where, where exactly is process coming from? What is the meaning of this? So, the this is our next topic that we have to discuss, which is global uh, variables. Okay. What are global variables available in Node.js? So uh, coming back to our console, we had some uh, global variables defined when we were uh, building front-end applications. So those were like window, right? And there was a called document, right? And this is a globally defined uh, variable. Okay. Similarly, process is one of the globally defined variables in Node.js. And uh, when we when we have one tab open and this is our this is executing our uh, JavaScript uh, code here we we get access to the whole document right the whole HTML document we get access to this. Similarly, in Node.js, when we execute a, a Node program and that is executed as a process in operating system. I would like to uh, explain this uh, to all of you in with a diagram. So let's suppose this is our operating system. Okay. This is our operating system and it is running a lot of processes. 
if you open task manager and go to the process list you will see all the processes which are running uh which which are running on your operating system and each process so like uh, for me chrome is also a process right now i'm running vs code so vs code is also a process that uh, my operating system is running okay i also have zoom running so zoom is also uh, executed as a process these are all processes the whole purpose of the operating system is to run process so whenever we uh, you know run a program like this this will start a process okay this will start a node uh, wait uh, this will start a node process okay and it is executing the code from index.js file okay this part is clear right chrome is using some some part of ram so suppose i have uh, 16 gigabytes of ram and uh, there is 16 gigabytes of ram on my machine chrome must be using some some of this let's say chrome is using uh, 2 gigabytes so i have 14 giga gigabytes free suppose vs code is using uh let's say 0.3 gigabyte let's say zoom is also using some 0.5 gigabyte so similarly my node program is also going to use some bit of uh, ram to store the variables right all these variables all these are uh, defined as uh, are stored in the ram as soon as we execute this all these uh, variables are loaded in the ram and as soon as the process ends this is wiped out from the ram okay so suppose it it uses 0.03 gigabyte not even like 30 mb okay is this part clear is this diagram clear making some sense so for operating system all of these are processes now node js is also going to execute a javascript code as a process and this is going to be a stand alone process for our operating system it's ba basically we will have uh, a lot of access or a lot of communication with our operating system now uh, earlier everything was running inside chrome so we were just communicating with the chrome we were not even communicating to a next to the next tab we were just communicating to this tab whatever is possible in this tab we will not be able to uh communicate what is in the next tab other tab okay so there were a lot of restrictions and chrome was communicating to operating system whenever we wanted to read a file we will have to first you know uh give a html form and user will choose which file and then that will be loaded in google chrome all these things <laughs> but now we will be running node js or javascript code uh in an stand alone environment called process okay so this is that globally defined variable again just to put in simple words earlier we had access to uh global variables like window and document right now we don't have access to window and document if i if i do uh, you know if i do document dot get element by id document dot get element by id although vs code is suggesting me uh, that there should be uh, there should be a document variable there should be a function like that but actually vs code doesn't know whether i'm going to execute this file in a node js environment or or a browser that's why it is suggesting but if i try to run this then it is going to throw an error saying document is not defined we don't know what document is what are you trying to you know imply because we are running we are not running this in node js rather we are running this as a stand alone process in the operating system okay this is what i'm going to write over here the so this node js program is going to run a stand alone process now i will have uh, uh other 
besides arg we we also have uh, different things available right different properties available in the node pro uh, in the process object so process is a global globally defined variable okay similar to document for browser uh, javascript right does this make sense any questions about this what process is Anybody? This is clear, right? Okay. Cool then. Uh, right. So with this, we can have, we can ask another question, which is what are other globally defined variables what are other variables which are globally defined uh, right now we just know we have seen that there is process now to answer this question i'm going to show you one thing and that is going to help you debug your javascript code as well as see you know what is available to us in node.js so this is called debugging and you can see this fourth option on your vs code go to this you know and if you hover on the left side of these line numbers you will see a red dot following your cursor so it means if i click on let's say line number on the left of line number eight and if i click here this is a you will see an active red dot this means that i have put a breakpoint on line number this line number eight and uh, this breakpoint has a special meaning. It means that if you, you know, try to run this uh, file in a debugger environment, not in a normal environment, but in a debugger environment, the execution will be paused on line number eight. Okay. Again, I'm repeating this breakpoint has a special meaning and it has this meaning that uh, if you execute this file, in a debugger environment, in a debug terminal, then the execution will be paused. So I'm just going to show you and I have just created a special type of terminal by clicking on this button, JavaScript debug terminal. If you click on this, you will see a new terminal and this is a special type of terminal. And I will go to uh, this folder, intro folder. And I will just run node index simply like before, but in a different terminal. This is a special terminal. This is a debug terminal. And if I execute this, the execution will pause at this line on this line where I have put the breakpoint. Okay. So see now I have uh, on this side, my UI is changed. Okay. I'm coming to this part. It has different options. All we care about variables right now. Okay. And here you can see that uh, we have the yellow background on this line and we have a few controls over here. These buttons, we can control the execution. Okay. So right now I don't want to resume the uh, execution. I want to show you uh, this thing, variables. So pay attention to the left side where we have uh, two sections. My execution is paused on line number eight. So it is here. I have two scopes. One is the local scope, which is this file. And then I have global scope. Global scope is available everywhere. Okay. And to show you this process variable, if, if I hover over name and if I hover over process, I can see the values. Okay. I can see the values like this. Okay. So if I hover on arg v, you can see that it is an array of length two. Okay. 
first is this uh, variable first is this string second is this string similarly if i hover over designation right now it is undefined we have not even defined this okay uh, javascript has not even executed this line so just to show you what other variables are available in global scope to answer this question i will expand this global okay global uh, section so in this you see uh, this is there is a lot of things here and first of all i will show you the most more important things there is array there is big int there is date there must be uh, in uh, string somewhere so there is string there is set there is number there is map so all these data types are available globally okay these are constructors to our data types and then we have uh, globally defined functions we uh, first of all we have something uh, there must be console also somewhere so um, you can find console somewhere there is process here okay so process is here and uh, there is global there is a clear interval clear timeout there is set timeout function so hold on that function set timeout set interval set immediate these functions are also available okay so console is available here all these are available to us uh, and in global scope okay infinity uh, nan not a number okay these are available does this does this uh, answer your question does this answer the question that what is available to us globally okay so process is an object and you can see in this we have a lot of properties this is like a huge object okay and if you see, uh, there is a property called version. There is property called versions, which has, uh, there is PID. PID is the process ID. So for, for each operating system, each for uh, operating system, each process has a unique ID. And this is for this process, this is that PID. Do we have to import global functions or simply use them? We simply use them because we are using console. We are using uh, process globally. We are not importing from anywhere. These things are available to us globally. Okay. I hope uh, this, this makes it clear. What are the things available? You will not see document uh, window and uh, all these things that are some of the things that are available in browser you will not see these here okay cool so if I just execute this if I you know execute this you can see each line getting executed and the lo uh, log is coming like this okay after the process is complete after each of E after uh, all these lines are executed the process will uh, get terminated everything is available uh, even if they are not highlighted everything is available globally okay I will show you if we have to use something how do we import we will talk that uh, we will talk about that when we discuss modules okay if there is something that we specifically need to import. But I hope this answers the question that what are global variables available in Node.js? What is a process and all these basic things about uh, Node.js program, okay? Any questions? If you have any questions about, you know, till, till this point, Ask me if everything is clear. You can also 
uh, answer is if everything is clear so you can just say clear okay now coming to the uh, third part which is modules okay so we are going to uh, we are going to write a lot of code in node js and not everything uh, we have to write so even basic things we don't have to write uh, code for that so for example if we want to you know uh, First of all, I think it's it will be better to start with the when we are discussing core modules or modules. It will be better to start with Node.js documentation, right? Uh, okay. So this is the Node.js documentation, and I am just right now. Uh, this is the home page. I am looking for a documentation which is a little bit old because I'm not familiar with uh, this uh, these pages. So I'm just going to go ahead with Node.js 10 or something. So I'm, I'm familiar with this, this documentation. Uh, you can also find all of these in the new pages as well. But I'm just going to show you. Uh, Node.js has a lot of built-in features already right you don't have to write code yourself for everything so first of all before you start writing so for example i'm just giving you a use case so that uh, we can talk in concrete terms we want to write a function that gives us a random integer right between let's say low and high so I want to implement this function. I can, there are two ways. Either I can implement this on my own saying math dot random times, you know, uh, low plus math dot floor. Uh, math dot floor. And you can just say I minus low. Okay. So this will give me a random number between low and high. Just giving you an example. So let's test this. So let's say I want a number between uh, 1000 and 2000. So this is, this will give me a random number each time I execute this. But what if I don't have to, you know, write something like this. Uh, I What if I just check in the documentation if something is already available? Okay. So there is a docu there is a library, built-in library called Crypto. And this library uh, has a function. Okay. It is not available in Node.js 10, but uh, in node.js 12 so again we'll change to version number 12 and if i'll search for random int now this library has a function called random int already defined and i can give minimum and maximum uh, options in this so that means i don't have to implement this i don't have to worry about the implementation of this function what i can do is i can import this library and i can directly start using this function so you, all of you have already used libraries in your React applications. So it will be, uh, if you were to implement, uh, import a library, you will implement a library uh, like this. Okay. You will import, import a library like this in React. Correct. But uh, by default, this syntax this syntax is not supported by Node.js. Although it supports importing libraries, it's not like it won't support uh, importing libraries. You can import libraries, but the syntax is a little bit different. So the default syntax is like this. You define a variable and this, this variable you want this, in this variable, you want to import a library. So you say require crypto okay so that means 
you are importing a library called crypto okay and now you don't have this function defined uh, yourself instead you you want to use this from library crypto okay if i run this you will still get the same thing you will get the same thing but uh, you don't have to write the implementation yourself okay so this is one of the core modules available in node.js and these are all the core modules available in node.js okay the the list is huge and it supports a lot of functionality you don't have to uh you know if you're looking for something uh that may already be present in one of the core modules it's better to go through this documentation and you know sometimes it also helps to google things that I'm looking for a function like this. Is it already available in core modules? Okay, I hope you understand what I'm talking about. So if you just look at this list, there are things available like uh, buffer, asynchronous hooks, uh, cluster, cluster won't be useful for you. Console, uh, crypto, debugger, there must there is events, there is file system, HTTP. This we are going to use, file system also we are going to use errors okay so errors is a module also if you want to use this and there is op os there is a there is a dedicated module to have which has functions related to os so os like os.cpus it will give you a number that represents how many cpus are available in your uh, system okay on your system so uptime for how long your system has been operating system has been up what is the platform which release host name all these things are you know functions that are interacting with the operating system layer itself okay so if i just show you this is the operating system module and i can just use any function so cpus like this okay so i have four cpus I think, or I think eight CPUs. So these are all uh, CPUs and you will see uh, some properties like this. Okay. So eight elements are here. Yes, we can see the, uh, in fact, we can see the code for this because all of this uh, Node.js is open source. If you want to see the uh, code for all these uh, operating system, uh, sorry, core modules, you can just go to GitHub Node.js, right? And you can read the whole uh, Node.js uh, code. Basically, these are all available in the core module. So it comes uh, with the Node.js when you install Node.js. You don't have to install these. So all of this will be available in, I think, this repository. Okay, in the lib folder, you will have fs, which is file system. So, I think uh, the code related to file system uh, module is all of this is present here. If you want to see for operating system, all of this is present over here. Small, very small package, actually 413 lines. And so many of them is just comments. So, you can read the code on this. I'm not sure why you would want to do that. Um, but yeah, if you want, you can read. Okay. So these this, this was all about core modules. Also, I'm just going to show you one of the core modules, which is FS, which, which stands for file system. And this is a very, very important core module. And we are going to use this later. And this FS module is used to interact with the file system of our operating system. Okay. So going to file system, we have, uh, we have all these functions available, rename, right? Uh, real, real, uh, real path and read synchronously. So we are going to use this function, uh, read file, sorry, not read sync, read file sync. We are going to use read file sync read directory so all of these functions you can actually uh, go and look at 
uh, read file like this. So you can see all the uh, use cases of this like that. Anyway, I'm just going to show you by coding this. So for example, if we want to read the contents of this file, we are going to say uh, readme equals to fs dot read file synchronously. And the first property that we have to pass, sorry, first argument that we have to pa pass in this function is the path. So I'm going to just say uh, readme dot md. And then the second option that, that the second parameter that we have to pass is an object called options object. Okay. <clears throat> in this, we have two uh, properties. The most important property is encoding and encoding is nothing but what is the encoding of this file in which encoding do you want to reopen this file? So this is a UTF eight encoded file. <coughs> Sorry. So this is a UTF-8 encoded file and we want to open this as uh, UTF-8 only, okay? So this will give me uh, the whole content of this file as a text or a string, okay? So I'm just going to show you. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, execute this code and show you that it's going to print all of the, uh, let me comment this out. So all of this con content is coming from readme file. Okay. So this file system module is very, very important. And you, you, you can see all the functions that are available in this module. Uh, if you want to interact with file system of the operating system, this file uh, system will become very useful. And we will also use that when we create a very simple JSON server, our own JSON, we will create our own JSON server in the third or fourth lecture, I think third lecture. So uh, this will become very important for us. So all of these are core modules that are available. Okay. And the core modules are available in the documentation as well. Okay. Uh, any questions so far about core modules? We have discussed, uh, you know, if we want to interact with, uh, uh, if we want to have interaction with operating system, if we want to uh, implement something, it's better to check in the documentation if it is already available as a core module if not then only we will code that thing okay we don't want to put our effort even if uh, you know it is already available in node.js core modules we will use it from there okay any questions is this clear anybody if, even if it is clear please respond in the chat that yes this is clear uh, if you don't have any questions, then also it is important to tell so that I can get an idea that, uh, you know, you people are fall is able to follow the lecture. If I want to start reading documentation from which version can we start? I think 10 and 12 is fair. Uh, currently we have, uh, the latest version I think is 18 or something, but it is fine if you start with 12. Okay. Every year they release a new version now. So Node.js is a very highly uh, active community and they have, I think, uh, they have made it a standard that every year uh, JavaScript will release, uh, JavaScript community will release new ES version. So with that, Node.js also has to upgrade. What happens to code written in older versions? In most of the versions, they are backward compatible. That means they will not remove the support for old uh, versions. 
that will still be supported, but new functionality will not be supported with older versions. So for example, if I have, if I am using this function, random int function, and it was available only after Node.js 11 or 12. For example, it was not available in uh, Node.js 10 version. If we go to crypto, you will see that there is no uh, random int function here. Okay. So we cannot use a uh, random int function if we are running any version previous to Node.js 12, right? So you will see for Node.js 11 also, there was no support. Okay, we usually work with CLI in Node.js. Uh, yes, basically everything, uh, we don't have any uh, UI output for this. Mostly we will be just working with, uh, we will be executing all of the Node.js programs and terminal only. Okay. How to switch Node.js version? You can uninstall and install. That is the easiest option. Okay. I have Node.js version number 16, which is uh, good enough for me. If you are on, let's say, previous version, I think 12 is also fine. We are not going to use any functionality which is not present in version number 12. 18 is fine. Anything above 12 or 12 plus is fine. Okay. So, uh, I hope everything is clear till core module. Now, many functionalities will not be available in core modules. You know, because when you build your own application, your application will have its own logic. And that for that logic, you will have to write code yourself. For example, uh, just for the use case, I'm going to show you that we are going to create an application that will calculate Fibonacci numbers, okay? So now I have checked that there is no, <clears throat> uh, no function present in the core modules that will calculate Fibonacci numbers for me. So that means I will have to do that myself, okay? So this is, we are coming to uh, user defined modules. Sometimes we have to define modules for ourselves and we, we cannot write the same, uh, same code for Fibonacci in a single file. We want to distribute that in, uh, different files. Okay. Uh, you have seen from your react applications that you build components, you store them in different files. You don't write the whole code in a single file. Okay. So I'm going to create a module called Fibonacci. Okay. So I'm going to create a separate module which has the code for Fibonacci numbers. So uh, nth, I'm going to calculate nth Fibonacci number. There is a very simple uh, uh, algorithm just to calculate this. And I'm just going to say from second, I already have calculated first two Fibonacci numbers. Second and go to that. So Fib dot push Fib I minus two Fib i minus one okay so this will insert a new fibonacci number and if we just return let's say fibonacci number n minus one that will give uh, the nth fibonacci number okay so this is the function and i want to use this function in my main file this is the module and I want to use Fibonacci number in my main file. Is this, is this clear what I'm trying to do? Okay. Clear with everybody, right? Now I want to import this function. 
before we can import this function, we have to export this function from this Fibonacci module. So I'm just going to say, say module dot exports. So this is how we export anything from one module for other modules to use. So I'm going to export this function. I just have this function. So this is what I'm going to export. And to import this, I can just say, since this is the only thing that it is, this module is exporting, I can import this uh, like this. I can just import it like this. Okay. This is the name of the module and it is in my uh, same uh, directory. It is in the same directory. That's why I'm saying dot slash Fibonacci. I don't have to write dot JS here. If I want, that's still fine. I don't have to write it though, but write uh, adding dot JS does not make any difference. Okay, now the function will be available in my index.js file. So I can easily say Fibonacci number, let's say 100 Fibonacci number. Okay. So if I run uh, this, mm -hmm. then this is the 100 Fibonacci number. Okay. Uh, commenting these things out. So this is the 100th Fibonacci number. If you want to calculate fifth Fibonacci number, then that is three. Three because zero, one, one, sorry, it should be one, two, and three. So this is the fifth Fibonacci number. Okay. This is how you define uh, user-defined modules. So you can have any, any number of files. You just have to export your functions and you can use the functions from different files. Okay. Is this clear? I'm not getting too many responses, but I hope this is clear for everyone and you're able to follow me. I would, yeah. Right now we are covering user defined modules. So many times we will not have a uh, mod logic or functions that we want to use. We will not, they will not be present in core modules. So for these, we will have to write our own logic. Okay. We are not exporting the function like we use to in JS. See, first thing it is not different from JS. This is still JS. We are writing it JS only. Right, this is JavaScript syntax, but we are not exporting uh, like this. We are not exporting like this. Instead, the syntax is a little bit different. Instead, we export it like this. Yes, the syntax is different. Okay. And I'm just going to tell you that this is the default syntax, although you can still support it like this you can still have uh, there is just uh, you will have to just do an extra tweak to support syntax like this okay so this is also fine uh, for us it is important to know what is the default approach and what what do we have to do to enable other type of syntax as well okay first of all it's just uh, this okay so uh, i'm going to show you what if we have to export multiple things? What if we have to export, let's say another function? Okay, how, how can we export that? So we say function dot, let's say I'm going to create a slow implementation also. You know, uh, just to compare. So I'm just going to have a recursive approach. If n is uh, less, equal equal to zero, I return zero. Else if n is equal equal to one, I return one. Okay, no, first Fibonacci number is zero. Second Fibonacci number is this. Else we return Fibonacci slope n minus one 
plus Fibonacci slow n minus 2. Okay, this is the recursive approach and it is very slow. You may already know this from your problem solving classes. But if we want to export, let's say, multiple things, then the best way to do that is by wrapping all of these functions in an object. So instead of exporting a single function, now we will export uh, an object which has these functions. Okay. And similarly, instead of uh, having one single uh, function here, we can destructure this object. Since we are exporting an object, we can destructure that object. Okay. So this is how we can say we want Fibonacci and Fibonacci slow. Right. So, so just to give you an idea how slow Fibonacci uh, recursive approach is, recursive approach for Fibonacci is, I'm just going to calculate uh, 30th Fibonacci number with this. So I get this. Okay. Uh, let me increase it to 35. Still not so slow. It is still executed quite fast. What if I do 40? So you can start seeing some lag, right? Again, I'm going to execute this. If I give it 40, 43, then you will see that this time the lag will be significant. So 44, I think it is going to increase the lag 10 times or something, four or five times at least. If I do it 45, then this will be very, very slow, more than 10 seconds. Okay. Yeah. But Fibonacci here, uh, the fast implementation, we can get 10,000 number. So this is increasing. Uh, this has exceeded the range of the integer supported by JavaScript. I think the range is somewhere around 40, sorry, 1750, still getting infinity. I think if I try 40, 1500, still getting infinity, 1400 maybe, 1400 is fine, 1450, still fine, 1475, still fine, 1457, okay. So somewhere between 14, 75 and all that. Huh. 77, uh, 78, infinity, 77. Yeah, okay. 1477th uh, Fibonacci number is the maximum range. Okay. So it's still, anyway, it's still calculated very fast, right? Not like uh, Fibonacci slow. So this is how you define user defined modules. This is how you work with user defined modules. Is this part clear? Yeah, I used binary search. That was intentional, yes. Okay, so uh, how to create user defined modules is clear, right? I'm going to, uh, let's say, if we don't want to define uh, Fibonacci uh, ourselves, let's say before we implement these things and we want a sophisticated library uh, from open source, where do we go to? We go to NPM, right? So NPM is uh, the place where we can download code modules from other developers, open source modules, right? And that is the third part that we are going to talk about, which is the third party modules. So for, for this example, I'm just going to show you a user defined module called Faker. And Faker is a library which generates massive amount of fake data for testing and development. Right. So I'm just going to say I'm in this directory user in uh, intro uh, before we can start downloading from uh, NPM. It's better to initiate an NPM project. Okay. You 
initiate an npm project by npm init and if you give the flag uh, dash y then it won't ask you a lot of questions so by doing this it will create a package.json okay it will create a package.json file in your project and we can now start installing uh, any any package from npm so if i do this then you will see the node modules folder is added right now okay and in this we have faker.js uh, sorry faker.js faker folder so uh, this is the package that we have just uh, downloaded in our uh, project now how do we use it just like uh, core modules or user defined modules we say faker js faker okay so this is how we import this so this is wrapped inside an object now to give you just an idea i'm just going to copy this function from the documentation and now if i run this function you will see create random user it is going to return an object it has all these properties user id username email avatar password birth date registered at and you will see that user id is a data type of uuid and username is a username from internet module email is an in, email uh, is an email it is a function in faker dot internet module so faker has all these different different types of modules right so random user okay now if i run this sorry if i run this you will see this is the random user detail that it generated so faker is a very important library that i also use uh, we will use this later in the course as well uh, so it is giving you random data so we will need to generate random data as well fake random data okay so yeah so you can use this and you can use other uh, packages so important packages that i have used is one of them is axios so axios is the package which allows us to make uh, api calls uh, on on browser we use fetch to make api calls but there is uh, fetch is not available in node.js instead we use uh, axios okay so node if i in, install axios sorry what am i doing it should be npm install axios we can import axios okay and uh, we can just i am going to write a function a same function because this is going to have sample get request and i will say axios dot get okay and i think i'm going to use uh type e code json placeholder fake uh, rest data so if we make this request we should get uh, we should get something okay so we have to await for this because this is going to be a network call this is going to return a promise 
And if we await that promise, we will see the response. So like this. So sample get request. Okay. And you will see this is the response that we get. And this is a big object. We, uh, we can just have data. So this is the data from uh, this URL, okay? And we are getting this logged at the later point because this is not uh, going to uh, stop the execution. So basically, this is a prom this is a promise. I think this is a function. So async function will be uh, executed as a promise, okay? So we will initiate the request, then we will uh, run all of this code and it will take some time to for this promise to get resolved and then we will log the data, okay? So Axios and Faker are the examples of uh, third party modules that we use in our projects, okay? Any questions? Uh, all of it is clear, right? Hmm. Okay. Cool. How did we get URL in Axios? This URL? JSON placeholder? I copied it from here. From this, this website. So this is a, a website which generates fake data. And we can use this. Okay. So if we if we use uh, say ten, so it is giving me ID number ten and the title is different and completed through. If I use hundred, then this is uh, a different to do. If we do to do's, then it is going to give me a random bunch of to do's. Okay. So you can see this here as well. We have all these to do's now. Okay. So this is it for today's uh, lecture. I hope it was uh, not too fast and not too slow. Um, and you were able to follow along the whole lecture. If there are any questions, you can let me know. Otherwise, we can conclude for this, this class. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I will share the recording, obviously. Tomorrow, we are going to start with HTTP and this that is going to be a rather theoretical topic to discuss so first we will discuss what http is how it works and then uh, we will look at how to create a basic http server in node.js okay and if you if you're interested in knowing what are the how how is the curriculum distributed for this series you can go through this in the first sprint we are going to have uh, this is this was the first lecture, Node introduction to Node.js. The second lecture is going to be about, uh, about HTTP server and uh, how we can create a basic HTTP server, how HTTP works and all that. Then the third is going to be about Express. So we, we are learning MERN, right? So M starts for Mongo, M stands for Mongo, E stands for Express, R stands for React, and N stands for Node.js. So right now you already, you, you just know React. And we still have to cover Mongo, Express, and Node.js. So we are uh, introduced to Node.js. Next, uh, we are going to create a basic HTTP server in Node.js. Then we are going to come to Express. And after learning uh, about Express for two lectures, we will come to MongoDB. And then, uh, you know, once you, you, you've gone through 
all these uh, lectures you can call yourself as a man full man full stack developer okay so we are going to learn about express in this week then we will talk about mongodb then we will talk about uh, uh basically authentication and authorization and everything how is uh there is a question from aman how is express different from node.js express is not uh something which replaces node.js it is used inside node.js express is just like a third party is just a library just like faker and axios it is a library just like react it is a library it is a framework and framework means uh, it has its own rules of defining things and how you work with express we will express is used to create http servers only and that answer will be that question will be answered in detail when we come to let's say lecture number 3 okay what express let's first understand what express does for us then we will try to answer the question you know if you have anything okay cool anything else okay okay then uh, that's it for today thanks folks for joining and hope to see you in the next class bye good night